Hola, que tal? Welcome back to Spanish Lessons with Professor Jason. Nice to have you back. In this lesson, I'm going to be presenting how to make informal and formal commands in Spanish. So, in other words, I'm going to be teaching you which forms to use when you want to tell someone else to do something, okay? Now, I'm going to use the whiteboard technique again to present this lesson, so I hope that that's useful, all right? And let's go ahead and get started with this lesson on the command forms in Spanish. All right, since these commands are addressed to different kinds of subjects, let's first review the subject positions and their corresponding pronouns, all right? Keeping in mind that we're focusing on informal and formal commands. So remember, we can set up this grid here for the subject positions and their pronouns, where we have first person, second person, third person, singular, and plural, okay? Over here we have the first person singular, yo, the second person singular, tu, the third person singular, or in our case, the purposes of this lesson, the second person, but the formal singular, usted, okay? Over here, the first person plural, we have nosotros, nosotros, or nosotras, the second person plural, vosotros, or vosotras, okay? And again, these are both informal or familiar forms and then the corresponding second person um, plural but the formal ustedes all right just a quick note on the informal versus formal we know that the to form is the second person singular or you in the familiar or informal mode used with friends family children some subordinates and animals all right now the usted form, in contrast, is the second person singular, you also, but it's more formal, more polite, okay? It's used with older relatives, some acquaintances, superiors, etc., okay, for more politeness. The vosotros form is the, again, second person plural, so it's equivalent to you guys or you all, and it's a familiar form, but it's used only in Spain, only in Spain. You will never hear this in Latin America, okay? The ustedes form in Spain would be the formal second person plural for you all or you guys. But in Latin America, it's the only option for you guys, okay? Second person plural, okay? Second person plural, you guys. So that's just a quick review of the um, subject positions that are relevant to commands, but also I should mention nosotros. We'll also take a look at the nosotros commands, okay? For example, let's eat, let's dance, let's do something, okay? Let's learn. All right, so enough about the subject pronouns. Um, we're also going to talk about um, affirmative and negative commands. So you can tell someone to do something, right? Affirmative command, or you can tell someone not to do something, right? Don't do that, which would be a negative command. All right, so we're going to look at both affirmative and negative commands in this lesson. Now, an important thing to remember is that it's the subjunctive forms that are used in all affirmative and negative commands, okay? The subjunctive forms, these are used in all affirmative and negative commands in Spanish addressed to these subjects we just talked about with two important exceptions, right? Except for the two affirmative commands and except for the vosotros also affirmative. Otherwise, all commands, affirmative or negative, use the subjunctive form. So, what does that tell us? Well, that it might be helpful then to review how to form the subjunctive. So let's take a quick refresher course, if you will, on the present subjunctive in Spanish. All right, the present subjunctive. Remember that if we have a typical AR verb, like hablar, okay, the way we form the subjunctive is we take the yo form, the first person singular form of the present indicative, we remove the o, and we add the endings that would typically go with the opposite type of vowel. So, hable, hables, hablemos, etc. Likewise, if we have an er verb, like, for example, comer, right, we do the same thing. We take the first person form of the present indicative, eliminate that final o, and add again sort of the endings that would normally go with the opposite class of vowels. Comamos, comáis, etc. Okay. Again, this is important because the um, command forms are going to use the subjunctive forms in most cases. Okay. 
And just a quick example of an IR verb, present subjunctive, something like, oh, I don't know, venir. Well, let's, let's take a look at vivir, since it's regular, right? First person singular and the present indicative, eliminate that O, and then add the opposite vowel endings, okay? Viva, vivas, viva, vivamos, etc. Now, this step right here of conjugating in the present uh, indicative yo form is extremely important because there are many verbs in Spanish that have an irregular form in the first person. Okay, so we have a verb like um, venir, okay, which is to come. We have to conjugate to the first person uh, singular indicative, I come, vengo, because all of the subsequent subjunctive forms are, again, a product of that. Vengais, for example, in the vosotros form. Okay, so don't forget that step of conjugating in the yo form. All right, let's move on then um, and take a look at some examples for each of the subjects we highlighted a couple of minutes ago. Okay, remember that all the forms, except for the affirmative to and vosotros forms, simply use the present subjunctive. All right, so let's take a look at usted first. Commands for usted. Right? I'm going to give a couple of examples for each of the pronouns. Um, for an AR verb, such as cerrar, to close, we could say close the window. Again, we're going to conjugate that in the present subjunctive. Cierre la ventana. Cierre la ventana. Or an ER verb in usted, like sell your house. Vender. Vender. Venda, again, present subjunctive, venda su casa. Again, we're using the usted form. Venda su casa. Or an IR verb, abrir, to open, abra la puerta. So here we have the usted form, second person singular, formal mode, just uses the subjunctive endings. Cierre, venda, abras. All right. Now, to make those negative, all you do is simply put a no. No cierre, no cierre, no venda, y no abra. Okay, so again, using the present subjunctive for the affirmative and the negative commands, no cierre, no venda, no abra, for usted. Let's take a look at some examples next with the, for the position of ustedes, okay? Ustedes, which would be you all, especially in Latin America. Ustedes, okay? you all or you guys. Again, some different verbs. As an a example of an AR verb, take the verb mirar, okay? like mirar una película. Uh, watch that movie. Again, present subjunctive form. Miren esa película. Okay? Watch that movie. Miren esa película. An ER verb might be something like um, leer, lean, esa or esta novela, read this book, lean esta novela, or an IR verb. Could be something like venir, remember we just saw that one as an irregular, vengan a las nueve. Vengan a las nueve. Okay, so if we want to make these negative, we're just going to again put a no in front of them. No miren esa película, no lean esta novela, no vengan a las nueve. All right. So with ustedes form, also we're just simply using the present subjunctive forms for positive or affirmative and negative commands. Now I told you with tú en vosotros, it's a little bit different. Let's take a look at tú first. And again, what's different is just the affirmative commands for tú en vosotros. So let's take a look at the position of tú, which is our second person, familiar, singular, right? You. Again, back to our AR verb example of um, close the window. Sierra la ventana. Okay, now what's different here is we're not saying cierre, we're saying sierra. In other words, an affirmative to command looks a lot like the third person of the present indicative or the second person without the S. Okay, another example uh, with an ER verb, vender, to sell. Vende tu casa, sell your house, sell your home. Again, it looks a lot like the third person present indicative or the second person without the S, vende, but it's not the same 
as the subjunctive form. Um, open the door, an IR verb. Abre, again, instead of abra, abre la puerta. So the affirmative commands, the affirmative commands look like the third person of the present indicative or the second person without the S, whatever is easier for you to remember. Now, what happens with a negative command? What happens when these commands become negative, even in the to form? Okay, if we want to make negative commands, now we're back to the subjunctive. So, um, no cierres, present subjunctive. No cierres la ventana. Don't sell your home. No vendas, present subjunctive, tu casa. And don't open the door. No abras. So we're back to the present subjunctive forms in the negative command for two. Okay? All right. Something similar will happen with vosotros, which again, vosotros is the second person plural formal mode seen only in Spain, but very common there. Vosotros, extremely widespread in Spain. Okay? Vosotros. So take a look at the vosotros two commands. Okay? I'm going to have you take a look at them first, and I'm sure you can figure out the pattern. Okay? Some of the same verbs we saw before. Mirad, and again, I'm looking at affirmative commands. Mirad esa película. I'm just going to abbreviate it. Mirad esa película. Leed esa novela. Esa novela. Or venid, venid a las nueve. A las nueve. Okay, venid a las nueve. Okay, I guess I've done it this way previously. Venid a las nueve. Okay, all right. So what you can see here is it's a little. The endings are a little bit different, right? They basically just take off the final r, right? Take off the final r and add a d. Okay, that's how you make the affirmative, the positive commands in the vosotros. So if you're in Spain, mirad esa película. Lee de esa novela, venid a las nueve. Okay. Now, to make it negative, as with the to form, now we're back to the simple uh, present subjunctive endings with a negative word. So, no mires, present subjunctive form. No mires, right? No leáis, present subjunctive form. No leáis. Or, no vengáis, no vengáis a las nueve, no vengáis. So again, the only thing that's different are the affirmative commands. But in the negative, like we see here on the screen right now, we're back to the present subjunctive. Okay? Now, you might be wondering, what if I need to include pronouns in the command form? Okay? What if I have to throw some pronouns in there like to me, it, them, they, right? and say something like, for example, give it to me or take them to him, all right? Now, in an affirmative command, affirmative command, pronouns come after and attached to the verb form. So, give it to me would be verb form first, if I'm using the to form here. Da me lo, let's say it's the book, da me lo. Okay, that should be a little bit closer because it's connected, da me lo. Okay. However, if I go to the negative form, it's going to be, it's not going to be connected. They're going to come out in front after the negative word. No, me, lo, and remember, negative, back to the present subjunctive. No me lo des. So, dame lo, affirmative, no me lo des, negative. Okay. Another example with the to form here would be something like, let's say, um, Instead of the to form, I'm going to use the usted form here and say something like, take it to him. Let's say it's, or take them to him. Take them to him. Take them to him. And them could be something like the books, los, right? Los. All right, so it's going to be in the positive, it's going to be, and I'm going to use usted this time. Lleve se los, lléveselos, lléveselos, 
don't take them to him. Again, the negative word first. No se los lleve. And for all the grammar freaks out there, notice that the indirect object pronoun comes before the direct. So indirect object pronoun comes before the direct in the order, both on the affirmative and the negative. No se los lleve. Okay? Don't take them to him. So again, they come connected and attached to with the affirmative commands and out in front, but after the word no with the negative commands. All right, now just to finish up here, you might have wondered, well, he forgot about nosotros. Never, my friends, never. Let's look at the, and I wouldn't forget about nosotros either. We're politically correct here, Professor Jason. Nosotros, okay? Um, what do we do with nosotros commands? Well, nosotros commands also use the subjunctive form. Okay, so if I want to say something like "let's dance," it's going to use okay. We start with bailar. Okay, it's just going to use the present subjunctive. Bailemos. Let's dance. Bailemos. Bailemos. Or for example, let's eat already. Comamos. Comamos ya. Let's eat already. Comamos is the present subjunctive form of the verb comer for the first person plural, nosotros, comamos. Or let's write the letter. Escribamos, I should be using capital letters, escribamos la carta. Okay. And to make any of these negatives, of course, I would just add no bailemos, no comamos, no comamos todavía, no escribamos la carta. So present subjunctive forms. Now there is one sort of quirk to the nosotros and subjunctive, and that's if you have a reflexive verb, like for example the verb irse, to leave, irse, or a verb like sentarse, to sit down. Okay? What makes them tricky is what happens in the nosotros form when you have a reflexive verb. Okay? Um, you might have seen the form, let's get out of here, vamonos, or let's sit down, sentémonos, I hope that shows up, sentémonos, right, sentémonos, okay, vámonos. What's happening here is the way to, if you want to figure out how to form this, you would just take the regular present indicative um, vamos form, or sentémos, and here it actually is in the subjunctive, sentémos, and before you add on the nos, right, just eliminate that s. Again, this is just with sentémonos. This is just with um, reflexive verbs in the nosotros form. So that's where something like vámonos comes from. All right, that concludes my presentation on the informal and formal command forms in Spanish, which, as it turned out, happened to be also a review of the subject pronouns and the present subjunctive forms in Spanish, so he's kind of got a three for one with this lesson. Anyways, I hope that you find this lesson to be helpful as you continue to perfect and improve your Spanish. And please, one other thing, let me know if you like the whiteboard technique, if that's helpful, all right? Um, as always, I welcome your questions, your comments, and your suggestions, so please let me know what you thought about this lesson, okay? This has been Professor Jason. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hasta pronto. Ciao.